70 degrees, muggy this morning at 6 a.m. All eyes the sky, yes, there will be clouds. It's muggy, so therefore there will be clouds. But how many? Mike will let us know exactly how cloudy it is for our eclipse forecast. Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And this morning we are counting down the hours until the total eclipse. Eight hours and 29 minutes, 10 seconds. It's like we haven't talked about this at all. <laughs> it's so funny, uh, Mark. We've, every time we've taken this, it's usually been like five days, three days. Yeah. Yesterday was one day. Eight hours. I know. It is getting so close. Good morning, everybody. It is Eclipse Day, Monday, April 8th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Hey, and welcome to all the visitors <coughs> that we have in the San Antonio area. Um, good to have you. I was out and about this weekend. Saw a lot of people from out of town just right here in San Antonio. I know a lot in the Hill Country and out to the west, but also here in San Antonio. It is the talk of the town. We are expecting hundreds of thousands of people to arrive in our region today from here all the way up of the Texas Hill Country and Points West. And the man of the hour <laughs> is meteorologist Mike Ostrage. And how would you top line this uh, forecast for today's eclipse? Uh, to paraphrase what uh, Sarah Spivey said over the weekend, kind of disappointment, I guess, as far yeah. as the cloudy, cloudy with a chance of disappointment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, we've got the high clouds around here, which wouldn't necessarily be the worst thing in the world, but yeah. it's all the, the low level humidity, the moisture, the clouds that are going to continue to kind of pump on in here. Those are the ones. Now, sometimes they do tend to break up sure. kind of quickly, but and, and it's not as thick usually in the hill country, but we're going to be dealing with them. And you can see that there in this picture. I mean, think back to even last week, how crisp and clear this view was from our camera down there at Brook City Base, and now it's a lot hazier looking with all the humidity that has moved back on in here. It is very, very warm. Look at the difference, though, out in the hill country, mid-60s, then we're at 70 here in town, so the humidity really hasn't come into the hill country as of yet, and even though there are some cloudy skies being reported, a lot of those are just the high clouds. We do have some lower clouds here in town right now, so here is the eclipse forecast. I think the best we can hope for is a couple of thin spots out northwest, better opportunity, even west and southwest in toward the uh, the path of totality. Still going to have plenty of clouds hanging around here. Yes, we will see that drop in temperatures. Then we're going to go back up to 80. And also then, so this is kind of two different uh, big, big headlines today, the eclipse and the weather for that. And then later on this afternoon, we're going to have showers and even a couple of potentially stronger thunderstorms. And Storm Prediction Center does have us. This is a this darker shade, the one on a scale of one to five, and this would be considered a two, and that's covering a good chunk of our area. So high winds and hail are going to be the biggest threats. The atmosphere is going to be very volatile later on this afternoon. Now, the cloud cover is going to help to kind of keep things tamp down just a little bit more uh, as opposed to if we had blazing sunshine then it would be you know almost all bets are off later on this afternoon but there will still be that threat for some uh, potentially severe weather so here's what it looks like uh, as far as this morning cloudy mist maybe a little patch of fog at eclipse time plenty of clouds I think we can hope for a couple of thin spots here and there. It will get dark, obviously, when that eclipse does take place, clouds or no clouds. And then later on this afternoon, a few showers, a couple of thunderstorms, more tomorrow, and maybe on the strong, potentially severe side, high winds and hail. And then wouldn't you know it, right after that, another front moves through here. Fantastic the rest of the week. Too bad we couldn't have taken that weather and scooched it up a little bit, but unfortunately that's not the case. As far as traffic is concerned, let's take a look at the uh, traffic authority as of right now, and we are still looking at that incident there. 10 at Hackberry, it was a, uh, a semi-trailer that had caught fire. The left-hand lane is open right now. Yes, Mark? And that's the only one open right now is uh, we did have that vehicle fire there. If, if you're not sure where this is, this is the southeastern edge of downtown. This would be I-10 East at I-37. It was completely closed down for a short time, according to RJ Marquez, who's now heading to Transguide right now for our pre-eclipse coverage. But uh, one lane is now open out there at 10 East at Hackberry. Mike's going to keep on the cameras for it. We've got another accident showing up now at Loop 410 Westbound at Airport Boulevard. Sarah? Well, new this morning, San Antonio police say a man was killed on I-10 on the city's east side. This happening late last night. It happened around 10 p.m. near I-10 in Dietrich. Police say the man was having vehicle problems on the side of the road when one of his dogs got out. As the man was chasing the dog, SAPD says he was hit by another vehicle and killed. 
One dog was seriously injured while another got away safely. In your morning headlines, passengers on a Southwest Airlines flight out of Denver got quite a scare as an engine's cover tore off shortly after takeoff. Take a look at this video. That plane made an emergency landing. No one was hurt and investigations are underway. There's a picture of it. Now, the plane is made by Boeing, but the engine is not. In a statement, Southwest called it a mechanical issue, saying, quote, our maintenance teams are reviewing the aircraft. There's some of that video as the plane was touching down back in Denver. In New York Harbor, a close call involving another container ship losing power less than two weeks after the deadly bridge collapse in Baltimore. Three tugboat boats were escorting the ship and were able to tow the ship until it regained power after being repaired. The ship was allowed to continue on its journey headed now to Norfolk, Virginia. And looking ahead, the end of March Madness is finally here. Number one seeded Purdue taking on number one seeded UConn tonight in the men's college basketball national championship. Tip off set for 8.20 p.m. from State Farm Stadium over in Glendale, Arizona. And congratulations to South Carolina wishing the <laughs> winning the national title game yesterday in uh, dominant fashion over Iowa. I was the pretty, side. pretty sad to see Caitlin Clark not take it, but... I mean, they did a great job. Congratulations, yeah. South Carolina. Well, back here at home, today's eclipse drawing millions to Texas from all over the world. And KSAP found one enthusiast who's traveling over 7,000 miles to witness the four minutes of darkness. Meteorologist Justin Horn talked with a New Zealander who gives us a new perspective on what's coming up today. I found New Zealander Carolyn Tamarcos by chance on the San Antonio Facebook page, Ask a Local. She had posted there about catching a ride from San Antonio to Stonehenge 2 in Ingram for the eclipse. Which, you know, God bless the Americans, we can't make it to Stonehenge, so oh, we'll just build one here. <laughs> so it's it's a 90% scale replica, and as you would know, being a meteorologist, that the eclipse path is 70 miles wide. Right. Well, this thing is bang smack in the middle, so I'm like, that was purpose built for the 2024 eclipse. Tomarcos is no eclipse rookie. She made the cross-Pacific trip to Missouri in 2017. The full eclipse is just mind-blowing. The experience assured that she'd be traveling back for this one. All the crickets start chirping and all the birds start doing their dusk chirp and, and, and then in the totality, the birds all go to sleep. And then like two minutes later, you can hear the birds sort of going, what the heck, chirp, chirp? What? What? It left her wanting more. So Tamarcus began planning for the 2024 eclipse, knowing she'd need to move fast. I very early got on and booked my flight from Auckland to Houston, which I picked up for 760 New Zealand dollars, which is like 500 American. It was so cheap. Although the flight back, she says, will not be nearly as cheap. Neither were many of the accommodations. Originally, I'd planned to stay in Ingram, which... Mm -hmm. When I first discovered this town, I think it has three Airbnbs and they're like $50, $60 a night. And I was like, oh, sweet, I'll stay there. Yeah. And then when I went to book one for the night of the eclipse, they were three and a half thousand dollars a night. So I thought, oh, there was an RV park half an hour down the road, which was like $28 a night for an unpowered site. Mm -hmm. $15,000 a night for an unpowered campsite for the night of the eclipse. Eventually, she discovered she could camp at Stonehenge 2 for $140 per ticket for four people. Which brings us back to that post. She was offering a barter, two tickets for a ride. She quickly got a message. Jordan um, reached out to me, and he's, he's actually an Englishman, but he's lived in San Antonio for 15 years. And he went, yeah, I can, I can give you a ride, not a problem. Everything fell into place. Tomarcos won't be alone, by the way. Visitors will be coming from across the world to San Antonio to experience the incredible eclipse. Justin Horn, KSAT 12 News. Don't forget, we have our eclipse special later today. KSAT 12 will be live on air and online from noon to 2 p.m. We'll bring you live coverage from Bernie, Fredericksburg, Kerrville, and other places throughout San Antonio. You'll be able to choose from many different streaming locations on KSAT.com and the KSAT Plus app on your smart TV. And as we get set to see the eclipse, how will the flash of darkness impact all the animals out there? It's something that the San Antonio Zoo is thinking about as well. So while workers there can't predict exactly what will happen, their theory is that once totality hits, many of the active daytime animals will start prepping for nighttime. The zoologists are all ready to take advantage to learn about the animal's reaction 
If you don't already have plans for the eclipse, the zoo staff says they are open for business today. And don't forget, we have zoo camps on our website at ksat.com. Might be fun to peek during the eclipse to see what the cranes or the hippos or the cranes are doing. Right. Or so the flamingos. The flamingos. Yes. And I know uh, one of the zoologists, uh, they said that they're going to be looking particularly at the flamingos. Yes. So I'm interested to see. I am eat. interested as well. 610, 70 degrees on your Monday morning. Go Spurs, go. Still to come before 630, the Spurs took Philly to double overtime in front of the home crowd. Ooh, but we have the highlights and who they're playing this week to wrap up the season. The path of a total solar eclipse will pass through Texas Monday, April 8th. But here's the thing, only half of San Antonio will be in the path of totality, and you definitely want to be in the path of totality. Right now on KSAT.com, we made this really cool interactive map so that you can see if you're in the path of totality and how long totality will last. Just zoom in to a location you're interested in, or you can type in a specific address using the magnifying glass. I've also made county by county lists showing when totality will start and how long totality will last for many locations. There's even fun eclipse views which show what the eclipse will look like all across South Central Texas depending on the time and location. Thank right. you, Sarah. Today is the day. Sorry, we were just listening to our producer, <laughs> yeah. Colin, there in the booth. And uh, by the way, glasses, glasses. Even if, I mean, the, yes. you know, the cloudy skies, people are going to be inclined to go, well, there's clouds out there. I can, you know, go I can look right at it. Don't yeah. do that. And they have to be updated glasses. I had a friend that was like, oh, I had these from 2017. I'm like, don't do that. Uh, don't do that. Yeah, they might integrate to Make sure they're not damaged at all. Uh, if you have them left over from the fall, no scratches, anything like that mm -hmm. out there. So, and of course, this is one of those things that a lot of folks, I mean, you know the the if you're interested at all in space read up about you know what folks are doing with this because they can study the corona and the you know all of the magnetic fields around sure. it and everything like that so. and even if we have clouds it's going to be notably darker oh, for yeah. that period of time yeah. it will get dark very quickly so this mm -hmm. morning we're going to be staying in the mid 60s mist and fog out there the humidity has definitely come back into the picture with those low clouds and after school today 80 we're going to have to watch out for some showers some thunderstorms maybe some strong ones as well going in toward dinner time so that'll be what we have to be on the lookout for obviously then the big question is in the meantime what's going to be happening as far as the eclipse is concerned Obviously, the edge of totality does cut right through the uh, northwestern portion of San Antonio there, 410 over from about the hill country down to the uh, the southwest near, uh, say, the Ingram Park Mall around there, and obviously out in toward the hill country, 130 is the the general time we're looking at as far as when totality does begin and out in the hill country it's going to last for about four minutes there in bandera a little bit closer into town you know right there on the edge maybe just a minute or so close to two and a half to three minutes on the northwest side over there by 10 at 410 but of course we're going to be dealing with a lot of clouds out there but like we we're just talking about it's still going to get dark i mean if there are some holes in the clouds and some thinner spots in the high clouds which is what we're hoping for out in parts of the hill country you know, it, you will obviously see more of the effects of it. But yeah, here in town, it is going to get dark. It's going to be like a very quick sunset. Quickest you've ever seen the get dark and then it's going to get light very quickly and behind that. There's all the uh, humidity. You can just see the low clouds and the the skyline is not very distinct looking like it was last week when we had that dry air out there. And this is what the satellite picture looks like right now. We've got the high clouds. These are the high clouds coming in here from the southwest. But it's the low clouds that are going to continue to work their way up from the Gulf of Mexico with all that humidity. By 1.30, you can see out in the hill country, a few thinner. This is just one computer model. Maybe some thinner spots out there. Perhaps down to the west into the southwest along the path of totality. But... Again, don't count on a lot of good viewing weather for this eclipse. Now, once we get after that, the atmosphere is going to be pretty uh, volatile later on today. So therefore, there is the threat for some strong to potentially severe storms out there. And this is going to be 
with high winds and hail being the, the biggest threats. A good chunk of the area is covered. Most of these I think are going to be the better opportunity is going to be further up to the north. That's going to be the situation tomorrow as well. But we still have that threat around here, especially in the first portion of the day. Then it's going to lessen somewhat as we go on in time. Here's what's going on right now. Of course, we had the glorious weather last week. We had that nice northwesterly flow kept things very nice. That's the low that's pulling in all the high clouds hanging around here. But of course, we get the low clouds down here at the surface. As this low approaches, this is what's going to help out with some of the uh, stronger uh, showers and thunderstorms today, tomorrow, then it moves past and wouldn't you know it, we get into a nice northwesterly flow again and that's going to pull down some glorious weather for the latter half of the week. Timing just was not in our favor, unfortunately. 80 today, we're going to have a lot of clouds around, hopefully a few thin spots here, some showers and thunderstorms in the evening hours. Those will sort of ease a little bit and then pick back up in toward tomorrow morning. Looks like it is going to be a wet commute tomorrow. Showers and thunderstorms may be on the stronger side. 82 degrees, plenty of humidity around here. Again, like I said, volatile atmosphere later on this afternoon as well as tomorrow. Then the front moves through. What a great stretch of weather going through the rest of the work week. Traffic later on this afternoon is going to be a big, big issue. Uh, obviously, there are some spots out there right now. Trans Guide is definitely on top of things, and that's where RJ Marquez is right now. What's going on out there, RJ? All right, Mike. Yeah, obviously this place is going to be the hub of a lot of activity uh, throughout the entire San Antonio and Hill Country area. Of course, they're going to have more courtesy patrols, more maintenance vehicles out and about in the areas where they do expect a lot more traffic and congestion. So for the rest of the morning, we're going to be out here at Transguide. So we're going to be right there with all the cameras and with the operators to get you a real time look exactly as what is happening across the city of San Antonio. Speaking of what is happening, there's still a lot going on right now. It has been very busy considering uh, that we are starting out the work week. A lot of people still heading to work. Uh, so we take a look here. I-10 at Hackberry, we had a crash from earlier this morning. Actually, a 18-wheeler uh, fire that uh, shut down I-10 for a little bit, but it looks like uh, we are getting a couple of traffic, a couple of lanes going through that area. Um, again, I-10 eastbound right there at 37. 18-wheeler uh, situation there has closed down a couple of those lanes. There's a couple other things going on, so uh, just let me know when we're back up on graphics, uh, our folks back there at the state. If we could just take Max 2 real quick and kind of go over a couple different things. Uh, there was a crash also being reported, Loop 410 westbound at uh, Airport Boulevard. And then there was an, also an incident being reported on 281 at ISIM. And then a construction out there on the far west side, uh, that there at 151 near Culebra. And uh, still trying to get a little bit more details on what exactly is going on out there. So again, it's been very busy. And we come back out here live to our Transguide traffic shots here. And again, we are going to be live out here. The rest of this morning throughout our morning cut-ins, 9 o'clock hour, just to give you a real-time look exactly as what's going on the roads, and we'll keep you updated on the current conditions out there. Guys, back to you. Right, RJ Marquez live over there at Transguide at uh, 410 and I-10 this morning. It's 621, 70 degrees. Muggy out there. I mean, the clouds are kind of just hanging around because of that humidity that's come in, and that is the forecast. There are going to be clouds during this total solar eclipse. It does mean it's not going to still happen. It's going to happen. It's just going to be dark out there. You might be used to living with your albuterol asthma rescue inhaler, but it's a bit of a dinosaur because it only treats your symptoms, not inflammation. Treating both symptoms and inflammation with rescue is supported by asthma experts. Finally, there's a modern way to treat symptoms and asthma attacks. Air Supra is the first ever dual action rescue inhaler that treats your asthma symptoms and helps prevent attacks. Air Supra is the only rescue FDA approved to do both. Air Supra is an as needed rescue inhaler and should not be used as a maintenance treatment for asthma. Get medical help right away if your breathing does not improve, continues to worsen, or for serious allergic reactions. Using Air Supra more than prescribed could be life threatening. Serious side effects include heart problems, increased risk of thrush, or infections. Welcome to the modern age of dual action asthma rescue. Ask your doctor if Air Supra is right for you. Welcome back 625. The visiting Philadelphia 76ers were fighting to make the playoffs in the East while the facing a Spurs team fighting for every win they can get before the offseason. Let's go to the fourth quarter. 
Spurs would lose Kelton Johnson to a foot injury. He would not return. That's when the Sixers close the gap. Batu makes the three to give Philly a one-point lead with nine seconds to go. Spurs respond when Wimby finds Champagny open for the corner and the three in the Spurs lead. 111-109 with 2.7 seconds left. Then the Spurs forget to play D. Tyrese Maxey goes solo to the rim to tie the game. We're headed to overtime number one. All right, Sixers by one. Devontae Graham makes this three-pointer, and San Antonio leads 121-119 with one minute to play. But Philly has some great passing, and K.J. Martin ties it with the dunk, and we're headed to double overtime right there. Spurs would take a three-point lead on this three by Malachi Branham. However, Philly does all the scoring after that, and Spurs lose an exciting game. So here is your final score. Spurs lose 133-126. They tried so hard. San Antonio has won 19 games this season. Looking ahead, Spurs have four games left to make it to 20 wins. They're at Memphis Tuesday night at 7 o'clock, followed by back-to-backs Wednesday at OKC. Then they're back home with two games to finish out Wimby's rookie year. Go Spurs, go. Go Spurs, go. 626 and 70 degrees. Let's check Transguide right now. We're tracking this incident on the southeastern edge, uh, southeast of downtown, rather. This is I-10 eastbound at Hackberry. We had an 18-wheeler fire earlier. Uh, at least one or two lanes are now getting by this incident. Good morning, South Texas. You're watching Good Morning San Antonio. Right now, we're waiting for the sun to come up. 7.14 a.m. is when we're due for our sunrise day, but the clouds right now are hanging tough. We're hoping for a break in those clouds for prime eclipse viewing around 1.30 this afternoon. It's a wait and see situation. It's finally here, and we've been talking about it for months. It's eclipse day, April 8th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. And hey, welcome to the San Antonio area. If we have visitors in town, I know we have so many out there because today is the day, yep. Mike. And I hope I'm wrong as far as but it's just it's looking like it's going to be very cloudy. I think the best we can hope for out in the hill country, uh, some thinner spots here and there with just the high clouds. But we've got all this humidity that came back in here yeah. overnight. A lot of the low clouds. That's one of the big problems. You can just see those clouds kind of hanging over the airport right now, and they're really not going to be going anywhere anytime too soon. 70 degrees right now, so it's obviously very, very warm and humid. This number dew point Remember yesterday we started off on the, the somewhat humid side. That front move through, dew points had dropped off. They were in the about low 60s. We dropped a good 25, 26 degrees for dew point temperature. So we were down in the mid 30s and then Humidity definitely came back, so we're almost 30 degrees higher than what it was yesterday afternoon as far as the dew point temperatures, meaning there's that much more moisture in here, and it's all that moisture that just gets continue to pump in here from the uh, Gulf of Mexico. Now, look out in the hill country, mid-50s out there, and it's not as humid, so the humidity hasn't moved on in. So that's one thing that's, that bodes well for the, the hill country later on today is we don't have a lot of that as of right now. Now, the, our forecast is going to come in here, but hopefully that would... It wouldn't be as thick of low clouds out there. Obviously, the escarpment tends to help out a little bit, too, as far as kind of trying to block some of these, this low-level moisture, these low clouds from moving on in there. But, again, it's not looking fantastic. Uh, we're going to have some patchy drizzle around the area like we have right now. And, again, a couple of thin spots in the clouds, best we can hope for, I think, here in town and on the northwest side where there is totality. It's going to be pretty darn cloudy out there. Then we have the threat for some isolated storms later on today, and there is the threat for severe weather late today and in the early evening hours. High winds and hail are the biggest threats, and this does cover the metropolitan area and then further up to the northeast. And this is where I think most everything is going to be up there to the northeast. But again, the atmosphere is very volatile around here. The cloud cover is actually helping out as far as somewhat reducing the uh, the severe threat or the likelihood that something's going to pop up, even though that severe threat is there. Cloudy mist, some patchy fog around the area this morning. Then we have plenty of clouds. Again, hopefully a couple of thin spots out there as the uh, as we approach eclipse time. And then later on today, as well as tomorrow, a few showers and a few thunderstorms. Some may be on the potentially severe side. A few more Tuesday morning and the first portion of the day. High winds, like I said, and hail are going to be the biggest threats around there. And then wouldn't you know it? Right after that, fantastic weather. 
just couldn't get the timing to match up. More on the forecast coming up in just a couple of minutes. Uh, RJ's out at uh, Trans Guide right now, and he's going to be talking with the folks out there about what's going to be going on later on today. But we do have a couple of incidents around town as of right now. There's one out there, as you can see, by the airport right now, and that's at um, 410. And it looks like right there at, 80, at 281, just west of the airport. And then we've also been watching this incident there, attended Hackberry all morning long. It was a uh, semi trailer that caught fire. They did find they had the the highway shut down for a while. They did open up a couple of lanes of traffic. And yeah, one lane is open as of right now. And then a couple of more quick checks around town there. 410 Jackson Keller, 281 at 410. As you can see from this vantage point, that accident out there is not showing up. And a couple of other spots around town, 37 at South Town at 410 at McCullough. Now everything there at McCullough is moving along well on top of that. So we're going to keep you updated. We're going to hear from RJ out there at TransGuide in just a couple of minutes. Mike, thank you. This morning we are counting down the hours until the so total solar eclipse. Today, all eclipse prep turns into reality seven hours away, 55 minutes, and just at around 30 seconds. Well, we've been talking about TxDOT, the Texas Department of Transportation, urging drivers to plan for possibly heavy traffic. Especially after. County mm -hmm. leaders in Bandera say they're most concerned about that after effect when everyone is ready to go home. KSAT's Avery Everett shows us how construction closures on Highway 16 could have an impact on your trip. Cowboys aren't the only ones coming through Bandera Sunday night. Ahead of the eclipse, it's cars, trailers, and a whole lot of out-of-state traffic. A lot of people from uh, like Germany and uh, England, so it's been, been a good time. Some only come the distance of San Antonio. We've just been coming back and forth. And others cross country. It's a 10 hour drive. As people start to settle at their eclipse viewing destinations, some say traffic hasn't been that bad near Bandera. I haven't run into any issues at all. I, mean, I keep saying it's going to be awful. It's going to be awful. It's going to be bumper to bumper. We have had no traffic. But that might not be the case through Monday. We're standing right now in what would usually be the outer lanes of Highway 16 headed into Bandera. But as you can see, it's shut down because of construction. This highway is now one lane in each direction, and county leaders say that's why they have concern on Monday night into Tuesday morning after the eclipse. That's when we feel like we're going to have the largest amount of stress on the community and on our roads and on our resources is when people decide to go home. To help minimize delays, TxDOT is avoiding new lane closures and construction Sunday through Tuesday. Lanes that are already shut down, like here on Highway 16, will stay closed, but contractors won't work through mid next week. Right now, people say the roads are mostly clear. They were so scared about like the cell service going down and everything, uh, but we haven't had any of that. It's been great. It's just been a lot of fun. But as the eclipse crosses over South Central Texas, officials want to make sure people know that could change. With the influx of traffic, TxDOT has restrictions on some oversized truckloads in certain Texas counties. We have that list with dozens of names on KSAT.com. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Avery. We also have our eclipse special later today. KSAT will be live on air and online from noon to 2 p.m. So we're going to bring you live coverage from all over a viewing area from Bernie, Fredericksburg, Kerrville, places throughout San Antonio. You can see on your screen all those different locations. We're going to have teams going live from all of those locations, and you can just find all this coverage on air, KSAT.com, and streaming on our KSAT Plus app. Well, thousands and thousands of people have made their way to the Texas Hill Country to get some of the best seats for today's total solar eclipse. But you don't have to leave town to experience total darkness. Daniela Ivada takes us to look at some places right here in San Antonio. It's a once in a lifetime event. My siblings, sisters, nieces, nephews will be there. And so we're excited. It just uh, seems like something from the Bible, <laughs> like prophecy or something. A total eclipse is set to cast its shadow across the country, right through the heart of Texas. Lots of people are picking their spots along its path. We'll probably come to the dog park. I work from home, luckily, so uh, I'll be watching it from the backyard. I'm going to be with my family, and we're going to watch it at my parents' house. So we already have the sunglasses or the eclipse glasses, and just going to make like a lunch out of it. Took the day off. Maybe we can come tomorrow and check it out at 1.30 if I can get off of work early. For the true eclipse experience, every second and mile matters. And if you're in or near San Antonio, you don't have to go far. 
If you want to be just within the path of totality, you can come here to McAllister Park. Here, you'll get 35 seconds of darkness. The time frame where you'll experience darkness will jump up significantly here in Stone Oak. Here, you'll get about a minute 20 of total darkness. And one of the prime spots to experience the longest duration of totality is here at the rim. Here, it's about 2 minutes and 38 seconds of totality. Despite the less than ideal forecast, totality seekers aren't letting it cloud their plans. We have some like uh, wine that's like moon themed, so probably bust some of that out and have some, and you know, hopefully we'll be able to see it pretty good. Daniela Ibarra, KSAT 12 News. And I expect quite a bit of traffic uh, west of San Antonio on places like Highway 90 heading towards right. Castroville and Uvalde. I think it's more of like they're like those text dot signs say, you know, wait, but at the same time, I think maybe just kind of see what everyone's doing in your area. Yeah and time it out. Yeah, those text dot signs around town transguide say arrive early, stay put, leave late. Okay, okay. 639 and 70 degrees. Just ahead, we'll have live coverage from today from those different spots, including Fredericksburg. We're gonna hear from uh, Adam Kasky and Justin Horn, both the KSAP meteorologists who are out there. They put together a nice little story for us right here on GMSA. Welcome back to Good Morning San Antonio. We are now six hours, 47 minutes and less than 20 seconds to go for the big event today. Millions of Americans will be looking up to the skies today to witness that rare total solar eclipse. People have traveled from across the country and beyond hoping for a great view. Our meteorologist Justin Horn is in Fredericksburg with Adam Kasky. They've been growing out all weekend and they show us how they're getting ready for visitors today. We've been here in Fredericksburg for a few days now, and we've noticed a few common themes, mm -hmm. upbeat, cheerful people, but we're not exactly seeing the crowds and businesses aren't seeing the crowds that they may have expected. With that being said, uh, we still met a lot of people from around the country and around the world for that matter. So, so where's the farthest that people have come? France. We have people in town from France. Did they get a pair of boots? Yes, they did. It's kind of a must. Turns out Europe is well represented in Fredericksburg for the eclipse. Where are you from? From we, Poland. From Poland. Yes, from Poland. <laughs> Love it. People from all over the world come into Fredericksburg. Thank you very much. Welcome to Texas. And the country, too. We met Lori Wright, who traveled from Palm Springs. So this is actually my first real visit to Texas. And what do you think? I love it. Oh, everyone says you all. It's, it's just, it's like for real. But you just hear it otherwise, but it's people really people say it. They really say it. I know. No, but, but it, I love it. It hits you like, what's all this y'all? Every yeah. sentence begins with y'all. And there were plenty of y'alls to go around today. Despite that, businesses in downtown Fredericksburg report sales aren't exactly where they expected them to be. We asked if locals thought the crowds were overly large. I haven't noticed it. That's why we came downtown to see and I haven't noticed it. What do you think it'll be like tomorrow, even busier? I think so, I really do. A good thing, considering several stores featured Eclipse-themed merchandise, like this candle, which we'll be putting to good use. If we light this candle Monday morning, will the clouds part? Yes. <laughs> oh, baby! <laughs> All right, we're going to take all of them. There are uncertainties with the forecast and the cloud cover, so we're doing whatever we can. <laughs> we're lighting the candle. It's going to work. It's going to work. We're going to get great weather today. And by the way, don't forget you can join us online and on air. We'll be bringing you live coverage from Fredericksburg during the eclipse. Join us. It's going to work. <laughs> It always works. It always you works. You always got to light the candle. <laughs> yeah, so we've got the big show later on today, fingers crossed. Uh, Mike also wants us to all be extra weather aware after the yeah. eclipse. Yeah. But where's those candles, man? Light them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> light them for Mike, please. <laughs> Main thing is like tiki torches and bonfires yeah. with that to help get rid of these clouds. But yeah, <laughs> lots of clouds, unfortunately, around here. And yes, later on this afternoon, we are going to have to be on the lookout for some potentially uh, some strong storms, and that's going to be the situation too tomorrow as well, but notice how no, we're not seeing any glow of the of the sunrise. Got a lot of clouds hanging around here. Still not the low clouds that really started to uh, to uh, thicken up, but we're going to continue to see all the moisture get pumped on in here. Dew points have gone up considerably from yesterday afternoon, and that will continue to be the case, and that's what's adding to the 
best way to describe is sort of the volatility of the atmosphere later on today. And, and actually, I know it's bad for the eclipse, but it's good as far as we're not getting that intense sunshine later on this afternoon to really kind of, you know, stoke the, the, the fires, if you will, of the, the volatility of the atmosphere. So that's working out on our behalf, having a lot of these clouds around here, kind of putting a lid on a lot of the thunderstorm develop. We keep a lot of uh, humidity around here and then notice how it does drop off. Yeah, right after the eclipse comes in here, we get rid of all the humidity and we got some great weather later on in the week. Here's the uh, satellite picture right now. We've got a lot of clouds around here. Notice how they've come in here from the uh, southwest. That's the upper level winds. That low is pulling in all these high clouds, which in themselves wouldn't necessarily be, be a bad thing. They sometimes break up, you know, the thin spots there. You can see the sun kind of peeking through some of those high clouds, but it's the low cloudiness that's going to really start to uh, kind of pump on in here and thicken up throughout the course of the, uh, the day and later on this morning. So computer model, again, I keep looking at this one, which I think is doing a Pretty good job out there in the hill country, thinner spots in the clouds, and we're, we're going to have a lot of clouds around. There's no two ways about that. And then we're going to have to watch out for later on this afternoon some of these showers and thunderstorms to pop up around the area. That's going to be going into dinner time, maybe a lull in the action somewhat, and then they refire tomorrow morning and we'll have to be on the lookout again for some of these to be strong, potentially severe around here, which Storm Prediction Center does have for us the severe threat. That's a, a one on the scale of one to five. This would be a two. But again, it's not going to be covering the entire area. I think most of these or the, the biggest threat is going to be further up to the north. Now that threat does exist again tomorrow and especially up to the northeast. When you get into a uh, this orange area, three on the, the scale, that's a, a decent chance for something to, to pop that is severe. So we'll obviously have to be on the lookout. But again, the cloud cover is going to kind of help us out somewhat as far as not having as wide a spread uh, showers and storms. There's that low again, pumping in the upper level moisture around here. And as that thing gets close, Closer today as well as tomorrow. That's what's going to then help out or help with the the threat for some of those stronger storms. And that moves on through here. And just like last week, we get this nice northwesterly flow there, and that's going to pull in some just spectacular weather for the uh, the rest of the week. So today, 80 high temperature, a lot of clouds. Hopefully we get a couple of thin spots here and there, and then we uh, get into tomorrow. We'll still have some showers and thunderstorms, some potentially strong ones, maybe severe high winds and hail are going to be the biggest threats. Front moves through, clears us out nicely. We've got some great weather in store then as we go into the latter half of the week. And all right, we are going to be uh, talking to RJ Marquez very quickly, who is out there because, of course, not only this morning, all eyes are on the roads, but then again later on this afternoon and folks at Transgat are going to be keeping a big watch on things, almost like a winter weather watch, right? Uh, yeah, Mike. No, exactly. Yeah, you said it there. Remember last week we uh, spoke with Laura Lopez. She's the uh, spokesperson here at Transguide, and that's where we are, the Transguide Operations Center. Uh, we've made our way inside, and, uh, you know, Lori mentioned that uh, much of this preparation is similar to a winter weather event in terms of the coverage that we're going to see out there. And just being and just being prepared and being ready to, uh, to you know, basically handle any sort of situation that we see on our roadways. You know, there was a story that Avery Everett did earlier about uh, not only, you know, the uh, construction that we've seen out in many of our roadways, but also even some roads going out uh, to Bandera. You know, you think about Highway 16, and also we have Highway 281, Highway 90. Those are also going to be very busy as we make our way throughout the entire day. So again, we are live right here at the Transguide Operations Center. Pretty cool to see everyone here. We have the operators downstairs. We have all the crews here. Text Transguide. They are going to be keeping an eyes on the roads, while a lot of people are obviously going to be keeping things uh, looking up to the sky. So just want to show you real quick though about the current road conditions that we're seeing right now and if we take our trans guide cameras here real quick we still have this 18 wheeler situation out there at i-10 eastbound at uh, 37 so we are getting some traffic moving through the area but uh, it's very slow going there as we have a couple of the main lanes blocked in that area in fact traffic is backed up right now i-10 east 
all the way to uh, the Provence area. So if you are coming I-10 East, anywhere between uh, 35 and 37, you probably are going to run into some of these delays out there. That's not the only thing we're seeing. A lot of other activity across the city of San Antonio. A couple of stalled vehicles, including one there, 281 Isom Road. And we have another stall on the northeast side, 35 at O'Connor. And uh, another one there at uh, I-10 in Wars Box. So we're going to come back out here live to our live shots here at TransGuide Operations Center. Again, guys, it's going to be very busy throughout the entire morning. We are here getting a real-time update on things that are happening on the roadways. Mark and Sarah, back to you guys. All right, RJ Marquez live over at TransGuide headquarters here in San Antonio. Thank you, RJ. It's 651 and 70 degrees. Let's take a look outside with live cam. The sun is starting to finally peep its way out. I see some minor breaks out there, Right. Sarah. Right. Uh, is that going to be the case when that totality hits around 130? I don't know. We're going to have to find out. All right, good morning, everyone. Back out here live at the TransGuide Operations Center. Things are certainly expected to get very busy as we make our way through, especially on Eclipse Day. But real quick, show you TransGuide because we do have a major crash right now. I-10 eastbound at 37. We are seeing some significant backups all the way to uh, Hackberry and ProBand. So let's go ahead and show you that real quick. And then we also want to give you just a quick uh, map there as we take a look at uh, the, some of the backup. And if we come back out here live to me real quick, again, the, some of the big tips that if you are about to head out, expect heavy traffic throughout the entire day through morning and sudden stops. Be on alert for distracted pedestrians that are potentially looking in the skies. And biggest thing, do not obviously wear your glasses while driving during the eclipse. And uh, make sure to not park on the shoulder or on those medians. Those are some of the key tips. Well, we're going to be here throughout the entire morning to give you some real-time updates in terms of our traffic situation as we get set for the much anticipated eclipse day across the San Antonio and Hill Country area. Mike? Thank you very much, RJ. And, uh, you know, it's always encouraging to see little breaks in the clouds like this, but of course, we're still six and a half hours away from the, the no, eclipse, you know, sure. from the prime. But um, yeah, we're going to keep a lot of clouds around throughout the day. Hopefully we keep some of these breaks or some thin spots, you know, and, and just have those high clouds hanging around here. Very warm and humid. Not as warm in the hill country, but there are some reports of some drizzle even around uh, Kerrville and forecast patchy drizzle around this morning, you know, here and there. A couple of thin spots, I think, is the best we can hope for. Gosh, I hope I'm completely wrong with this forecast, but it's not looking <laughs> encouraging. And then we're going to have to watch out for some stronger storms later on. Today. I'm encouraged looking at that. Yeah. Fingers well, crossed. We lit the candle. There yeah, we go. <laughs>